Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and its relationship to the US dollar. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 70,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So historically speaking, we know there is a, a, a pretty cool relationship between the, the dollar, the US dollar index, and the price of Bitcoin. Typically, when the US dollar is not doing so well, Bitcoin tends to do pretty well. And, and the reverse also holds true. If the US dollar is increasing in value compared to other currencies, then Bitcoin tends to do not quite as well. So in this plot, we have the price of Bitcoin on a logarithmic scale, meaning each major tick is 10x. So make sure you understand what that means. This is $10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. And over here, I don't have it labeled, but this is the US dollar index, DXY. And it goes on this chart, it's just going from about uh, 70 up to 105. And one of the things we can do is recognize that when the dollar is falling, Bitcoin tends to do quite well. So we're gonna, we're gonna highlight a few regions. So here's one, you can see the, U the US dollar index, so DXY, the, the DXY is dropping during this phase, Bitcoin's going up. And then when the dollar starts gaining value against other currencies, this is where Bitcoin starts to drop. Here's another good example. Um, over here, the, the US, uh, this is DX, DXY again, right? It's dropping in this region. And while it's dropping, Bitcoin's going up. And then when it's going up, Bitcoin's going down. And then another time over here where Bitcoin went through this massive bull run and during that same period of time for the most part USD was uh, was dropping and then in the same manner Bitcoin has started another run that started at about you know in March uh, during the, the the big the big crash and since March the dollar has more or less been falling and and since that time Bitcoin has been more or less going up so we're going to try to break this down a little bit more. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the 20 week moving average of DXY. Okay. And again, this is the US dollar currency index. So this is a 20 week moving average of it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to color code Bitcoin based on whether um, Bitcoin based on whether DXY is above or below its 20 week moving average. So I know this legend uh, might be somewhat incomprehensible. It looks like something Oh no, this looks this looks fine. So when it's green, Bitcoin is this is the price of Bitcoin, but it's when DXY is above its 20 week and red is below. Okay, so let's clean this up a bit so you guys understand fully what's going on. So when we just look at this plot, you can see that the three major peaks that we've had, the, the three major uh, you know macro level peaks that preceded uh, you know a fairly extensive bear market they occurred when DXY was under its 20 week moving average. You can see these three primary peaks at those times, DXY was under the 20 week moving average. And during these bear markets, all three of them, one, two, and three, DXY was above the 20 week. Now you can see that there was a bit of lag time. Uh, by the time that DXY got above the 20 week moving average, the peak was already set. But of course, we know that it, you know when 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 something starts going up, it doesn't instantly get above the 20-week moving average. When when Bitcoin started going up from $3,800 and it rallied to 4,000, then 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, it didn't get to the 20-week moving average until several months later. So we can understand why it might take a while for DXY to rally above its 20-week moving average. But you can see that all bear markets are associated with a drop. Um, or sorry, with an, with an increase in DXY against the 20-week moving average, meaning it's above the 20-week moving average during all three Bitcoin bear markets. There might be some days uh, sprinkled in where it's not, but for most of the bear market, you can see that in fact, Bit, uh, DXY is under its 20-week moving average or above its 20-week moving average. And then when Bitcoin is in its macro level peak, DXY is under the 20 week moving average. So clearly there's a relationship there. If we want Bitcoin to do well, then typically, historically speaking, that means DXY is not doing quite as well. But it's not always um, uh, the case. For instance, if you look at this peak here, 
it actually corresponded to DXY also being above the 20 week. So Bitcoin was doing well. And at that time, DXY was also doing somewhat well. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to break it down even further and see if there's anything more that can be learned. So one of the things we can look at is, and I, I made a quick risk metric for DXY. I might tweak this um, if I, as I have more time, but I wanted to go ahead and get the video out because there were a lot of people talking about it in the Telegram channel, and I do think it, it does provide value. So this is a risk metric on DXY, and all we're doing is we're color coding Bitcoin based on the DXY risk metric, okay? So it goes, in this instance, it goes from around 0.5 to one. You might be curious as to why it doesn't go down to zero or down to 0.1 or 0.2. Well, it's because DXY, we can take it back much, much further. And it's just in the last 10 or 11 years, the risk level has been between around 0.5 to one. Um, and what you may notice is that at these peaks, at all three of these peaks, we get into the blue region, meaning at that time, DXY, the risk on, on the dollar is, is getting to pretty historic low territory, pretty historic lows, okay? Right now, you can see we're, we're getting it pretty, pretty, uh, when we're say below 0 0.65, it means the risk on, on the dollar is getting pretty low. It's been getting hammered and hammered and hammered. And uh, we would assume that at some point it would it would turn around, but we also recognize that these these phases can last for months before before anything can change. And you can see during all three major peaks, this one we were all the way down here around 0.5. In this one we were all the way down here around 0.6, and in this one we were just below we were just below 0.7. So in all three major peaks, the risk was you know approximately 0.7 or below for dxy and then this one which by the way remember it, it, the dxy was above the 20 week moving average but we can see here that the risk on dxy was still relatively high around 0.75 maybe even a little bit higher so while while they may appear that appear to be the same because they're both above the 20 week moving average um, or DXY was above the 20 week moving average and Bitcoin is also doing well, we can see here that the risk on DXY was, um, it wasn't quite as low as it was during the second later peak. So you have three major peaks. And then you can also see during the bear markets, the risk on DXY was a lot higher, you know, reaching around 0.8, even going up into the 0.9 to one territory again here around 0.8. So what this tells us on a macro scale is that when when Bitcoin is going through these massive bubbles and you see the risk, if the risk on DXY is going down and down and down, and we know that the Bitcoin risk might be going, you know, exceedingly high, then there could be a, 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 a great opportunity to convert profits back to Bitcoin. Now, I know a lot of people that are, are into crypto might be of the mentality of, of never trading back to USD um because of you know the you know the narrative of of whatever it is related to the dollar we're not going to get into the sensationalist stuff i'm a little bit more pragmatic on this channel at the end of the day um you know i i, I want to i want to secure profits into something that's a little bit more stable than than bitcoin because i i don't want to ride you know I, if you've been in crypto long enough it's not fun riding you know 70 80 percent drops and while ultimately we would expect Bitcoin to recover from those 70 to 80% drops, you still have to spend many, many years waiting for that recovery. And there is such a thing as the time value of money. Um, you know, if you, let's say you want to buy a house and you own a certain amount of Bitcoin and it goes up to a certain level and that could be a nice down payment on a house, maybe just outright buy the house and then you decide, okay, I'm just going to hold on to Bitcoin and then it drops 80%. If your family needs that house now, it might not be that timely to have to wait, say, four or five years to get back up to that same level. So this is why, in my opinion, it actually does make sense to convert back to fiat, back to stable coins, whatever it is. This is my opinion. I'm sure a lot of people disagree, um, but I just wanted to give my thoughts on that. So when we have these major blow off tops, if you're looking to take profits from Bitcoin, you could obviously sometimes take profits to other coins like Ethereum or maybe a few other coins. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, once once Bitcoin has hit that new paradigm shift and it starts to come back down and altcoins get drugged down with it, uh, then I think it, it can be a good time to, you know, to, to basically run for the hills, so to speak, and, and, and exit to the safety of, of fiat or stable coins. And you can see, you know, normally I color the risk metric 
based on Bitcoin. So it would be red here, red here, red here, and red here. But again, this risk metric is based simply on the dollar. Um, and we can see, again, that all three major peaks, the risk level got pretty low in terms of where it historically has been for since Bitcoin has been around. And during bear markets, it was historically high. So in bear markets, to reduce risk, you can convert USD to Bitcoin. And during blow off tops, to reduce risk, you can convert Bitcoin back to USD. Um, if we take out the color coded dimension and then just plot the DXY risk on the secondary Y axis, you can see general areas of uh, say lower valuation, lower risk and higher risk. Um, for instance, if you look at each bear market, you can see the risk on DXY was rather high. Here it was around 0.8. Here it went all the way up to you know the 0.99, somewhere in that ballpark. And then here it even reached, it was around 0.8 um, during this bear market. So during all three bear markets, major bear markets that we've had, the risk was relatively low. And you can even see over here before this, you can't even call this a bear market. It's just when it started out, the risk was also around 0.8. So all three times or all four times that preceded a major, uh, a major move, the DXY risk was actually around 0.8 or higher. Um, contrary to that, when you look at the peaks of Bitcoin, so here you can see the, the risk on DXY was all the way down here at around 0.5. Um, during this one, it was a little bit higher around 0.7. And then on this one, it was also around 0.5. And now you can see the risk on DXY is coming back down. Um, it's still not as far down as it was, say, in, in uh, 2018, early 2018. It's not as far down as it was in, say, 2011. It's already further down than it was here in, in 2013, late 2013 and 2014. And again, this, this metric is not meant to be something that um, can definitively tell you where the top is or where the bottom is, but it's just one more tool that we can use to help us understand the markets, help us understand some of the chaos in the markets, try to just get a better understanding of what's going on. And I think that by tracking the, the US dollar, the valuation of the US dollar uh, can help us do that. So we also want to, to segue into uh, just a couple of the, the trading view charts. So if we do that, uh, before we before we continue, I want to remind you that if you like the content, subscribe, help us get to 70,000 subscribers. And remember, we do have a Black Friday promotion for the premium list going on. So if you want to check that out, you can find that in the description below. Uh, make sure you sign up before it expires. You'll get access to weekly reports, weekly videos. Um, we'll be adding the this risk level of the dollar to that. You also get access to the Telegram Alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the some of the trading view indicators and um, a risk dashboard among a few other things. So you get access to a whole lot of stuff. Make sure you check out the Black Friday deal and subscribe to the channel. So the other thing I wanted to draw your attention to is this is a monthly chart for DXY. And I think it's interesting because even you can, if you just look at it, you know, you can see from, uh, from say 2014, uh, 2015, this was when USD, the, the DXY was going up. And we know that's when Bitcoin was dropping. That was the bear market. And then here, starting in 2016, early 2017, USD was dropping. And we know that Bitcoin was going parabolic during that time. Um, in the same manner, in 20, you know, 2018, you can see USD is increasing. And during that time, we know that Bitcoin was losing value. And then starting in March or so, this started going down. And that's when Bitcoin started going up. Another useful insight that I found was that it seems like uh, in 2017, you can see it was moving down, moving down, and then it had this quick bump up starting in August through September, approximately. August through September, USD increased in 2017. And if we go look to see what happened in 2017, in September, August and September, you can see that actually was a time when Bitcoin went down a little bit. Um, so I think that was interesting as well. And then if you go back and look to see, okay, well, this year we saw a move back up in August and September, October, this time frame, USD started going back up in the intermediate time frame. And during that same time period over here, September, late August, September, um, October, early October, this is when Bitcoin dipped back down. So there are some similarities uh, that we can see between say this dip here that was similar to August of 2017 or the, the move back up in August 
of 2017, and then here in September of 2020. And in both times, it also corresponded to Bitcoin having a pretty nice uh, short-term correction. So one of the things that I think this will be useful for is that if we do see a turnaround of DXY, of the US dollar, whenever we see a turnaround, whether it's next month, two months from now, um, a year from now, whenever that might be, it could be a good uh, a good indicator to help us understand, uh, you know, corrections in in the cryptocurrency market just by looking at the the U.S. dollar currency index. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this is useful to some people. I know these types of videos uh, are not necessarily the most riveting, but at the same time, uh, I think they're probably the most uh, useful in terms of educational content. So if you guys like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and also check out the telegram channel in the description below and remember you can you can share these videos with a friend maybe they're not into bitcoin but they they understand usd really well they understand dxy and then show them the relationship between dxy and and bitcoin and, and show them how bitcoin can be a way in fact to reduce risk uh but at the same time there will be days that come with bitcoin that you could argue the, the opposite, that you can go back to USD in order to reduce risk. And again, this, this channel is not meant for day trading in any way. We look at macro moves in the market um, and try to stick to long-term strategic plans for, for making money in the market. Again, this is not financial advice. We just look at historical trends and try to inform our future decisions. So again, subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 70,000 subscribers. Check out the Telegram channel in the description below. Give the video a thumbs up to help out Help out the algorithm, if you will, uh, turn on your notifications and check out the Black Friday deal, which you can find a link to in the description below. That'll wrap it up for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.